Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Adewale Yusuf. Would you rather prefer your dashboard to look like this one or this one? I'm sure you love this one, right? In this video, I'm going to share with you eight tips to help your Power BI report or dashboard stand out to your audience or to the management, right? So in this video, I will share all the eight tips and I'm going to see how we can actually make this dashboard, the body dashboard look like the interesting and stunning one, right? So let's go right into it help share with you eight tips to help your work stand out and look very very great right so the first thing i'm going to start with in the eight tips when you're building your dashboard is how can we move from uh, an ugly dashboard to something very very neat look at this dashboard for example let's look at this dashboard together for example this dashboard you're looking at on my screen is the same dashboard that i have here but i put this in another design which is specifically black so this is a black design so if you prefer black a lot i'm sure you're going to probably like um uh, this one you can see on my screen this is black design if you prefer uh blue you can actually uh like maybe this one i put on my screen here so the color do not actually matter it's actually the way you build your dashboard and you make your work look extremely professional right the color does not matter like i said or you can even decide to use another color just like i did here uh, this is something similar to purple and you can even do a a, a redesign entirely it's okay let me redesign entirely and let's make your dashboard look exactly like this one so how do we achieve this one so i'm going to start by sharing the tips i've mentioned with you one by one so the tip number one i'm going to share is don't forget about these tips the first tip is sketch is not a bad idea right before you start building your dashboard one thing you should learn how to do is kind of sketch it on paper understand what you want to do okay i want this slicer to be here i want this dashboard to be here then i want this to be here i want this to be here it's actually amazing some people kind of do this in powerpoint so they create their layout in powerpoint and then they just bring this right into power bi to start working but you can either do it in powerpoint or you do it as a sketch just put it on paper very simple right so what I'm going to do uh, to kind of um, build our dashboard and look at what we want to do in, in terms of this one is let's look at this together. So the thing I'm going to do, if I'm going to stretch, sketch this on paper, is I want all these cards to be at the top here, and I want this um, picture to be down here, the slicer should be here, and I want the charts to just be to this side here. Just these four charts just be to this right here. So that's my tip number one. Now let's move to tip number two. Tip number two is kind of very interesting and it's something you should always do, right? Grid can help your eyes. Always switch on the grid when you start, when you want to start building your dashboard. You can switch on the grid lines and that will help you arrange your dashboard and make your dashboard look exactly the way you want it. Now let's go into that and let's see how that actually works. So in my dashboard here, most people don't do this. If you go to the view tab, so from the view tab, you can switch on the grid lines. Look at this, grid lines, grid lines. And for me, just switching on the grid lines, I can see that, okay, so when I'm dragging my dashboard, I can see the line. I can easily see things and move things around. I can see the layout of things and see how things is actually practically and being arranged, right? So I can see different things and I can start dragging my dashboard um, around. So I've switched on the grid now. So what's the next thing that I think we are going to do based on my tips? So the next thing you should always do is alignment will make your work stand out, right? Always align your visuals. So most people just dump their visuals on their dashboard. They don't bother aligning these visuals. And sometimes this can kind of make your visuals look non-professional. So let's look at alignment. So if I want to start with alignment on this our dashboard, and if you look at the dashboard we have here, it's, it's kind of very, very, very well aligned. You will see we have the chart here, we have the picture here, and we have practically the numbers at the top here. So let me start with alignment here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rearrange this. So probably I can push this, uh, this one, I can push it down here. I'm going to bring this, uh, uh, just bring this, bring this guy here, right? Bring this, oh, this guy, just bring them at the top here. So you can see. Even though they, it looks like there is actually no space, but there's actually a space, right? So you can actually uh, make use of the space that you have and you still be able to build something. You can see I'm just uh, creating something rough right now, not really uh, so much uh, work being done. So one thing I will always advise you do as well is kind of look at the size of the visual because you can always align them together with the size without stress, actually. So this one that I have here, it does not make sense to 
a category visual as a bar chart. So I'll probably change it to um, uh, an horizontal bar chart, which is something like this one. Then I'm going to go to this place here. So you can go here, here, then here you go to general. General kind of make this easy for you. So from general, I'll go to property. Property is right here. So you see property here. Then inside property, I'm checking the size. The size is 2229 for the height and 425 for the length, right? So I can come here and do the same thing for this one. Say 229. I think that's uh, what I saw here for the height. 229 and 425 for the width, right? So I'm going to do 425. So just by doing this, I have the same width for this visual now. You can see it's actually the same width now. So I can move it down a bit just to make this work. And I can come here and kind of do the same size for this one. So, so 229, 425, 229, and then 425, right? So 425, is it 425? Yeah, it's 425. So 425, which eventually give me the same size for these guys and this one too. So I can just do 229. And then 425, 425, right? So just by having this, I can practically just bring this here and just select this as well and go to my format up here. So under format, you see alignment, which is very important. So alignment is here. It's very, very important, alignment. So here, just select alignment and then you, I can say align to the top. So once I do align to the top, it's going to align it very well. I can even distribute this, but I don't need to do that. Then I can also pick these two guys and say align to the top as well, right? Align to the top. So once I have this aligned to the top, then I can either drag them here or just select this, select this, and just align it to the left, align left. So I'm sure they are all the same. And then I also select this, select this, and say align to the left, align to the left. And I select this and select this and say align to the top, right? And line top so that way all my visuals look kind of nice now they look interesting and then easy alignment so the next thing i'm probably going to do is this name of visual here maybe i don't need it because i have a slicer that can actually give me the name which is this one so i can delete this guy and then bring my card here just split them across here and here and then i'm going to select them um, so let me just put one here. I'm going to select them like this and select them, select them, select this. You can see the power of alignment. Go to format, align. I'll say align top and I will say distribute horizontally. So that we distribute all my entire chart horizontally here. And I can bring this, this here and probably change these slicers to something else. So maybe change it to tile. So I prefer tile instead, right? So I can change it to tile. So if I go to my visual settings, slicer setting, I'll change that to tile. And here I have the tile here, just the tile here. I can switch up the slicer either so that um, I don't have um, this actually kind of, let me make this a little bit bigger, right? And the year months, probably I'm going to change this to a tile as well so that um, my users can actually um, um, select something, something really interesting, right? So something is interesting, but I'm going to split it because it's, months and years so let me split this into two um so that i'll be able to do tile so this one is year and then let me leave this one as month so i can do year month first so year i'm going to select this go to my slicer setting and select tile for this one so i have the year here i'll switch off the slicer header then month here i'm going to go to here and also select tile then i have my month here so I have the months, just the months like this, just uh, probably can leave it, can even make it a little bit uh, uh, shorter or simpler, right? So that's tip number three. So let's look at tip number four. So the next thing you should also look at when you are building a dashboard is appropriate spacing is very necessary. And when I'm talking about spacing, I'm talking about the spacing in between your visuals. How do you make this look interesting and give an appropriate spacing into your uh, visual? So let's look how this actually look. So here in my visual, you can see that in between this space, uh, I should have a space, right? Look at this. There should be an appropriate space between this visual and also appropriate space between the the chart. So what I can do to kind of reduce this is I can probably reduce my uh, uh, visual a bit. Okay, there is a space to the right a bit, so I can take these two and take it to the to the right here. And you can see now that I now have um, 
a space in between my visual a little bit, a space in between my visual a little bit, and there is also a space in between here. And here, there's also a space, right? So this kind of make a lot of sense, right? So spacing is very important and interesting. So let's look at tip number five. So tip number five basically is select the right background. Sometimes when you're thinking too hard and you don't know the color to select, the right, the default background is actually okay, right? Default is okay. So you don't need to stress yourself too much. You can go with the default, right? So let's look at our visual and see what we can do to improve this. So here, uh, I can actually think of the background, but the best thing I can think of is to use the background of this particular uh, picture itself so that it can blend with the background. So look at this picture. The picture has a background. So if I actually use the background color of all of these pictures, it will blend well with, with my background, right? And it will make this, this picture even make uh, a, a lot of sense, right? So the best thing I'm going to do is to go to my background. So select here, go to my Canva background color. So here, the background color, I'm going to look for the exact um, S code or color code of this particular background color. So what you can do is you can make use of some amazing tools online to kind of get the S code. But I think I have the S code in the uh, other visual. So I can even easily go here, go to my canvas settings. Uh, sorry, go to my background, uh, canvas background. Then here, I have the color code here. So I'm going to, going to copy this color code, right? This color code. And I'll come here go to my background and go to canvas background, come here, more color, and just paste this color code here. And um, just by doing that, let me reduce the transparency. Just by doing that, you will see that the background kind of match with the color of the picture. But the best way to can now reduce this to make this a little bit make sense is I'm going to switch up the background at the end of all of these visuals so we can see, uh, so I can select even my cards, I can switch up the background. So you see that everything kind of use the same background now, and I still have my grid lines on, which still make a lot of sense. So number six tips is use the right visualization, right? Use the right visualization. Stop using pie charts. I'm sure a lot of people like using pie chart a lot. And this is what I tell people. If your visual is static and it's not going to change and you have uh, uh, lesser, uh, okay, let me say lesser comparison, you can use pie chart. But if your visual is not static and it's going to eventually change, please don't use pie chart. Stop using pie chart, right? So if I go to my visual here, we say the right visualization makes sense, right? So the best thing I'm going to do is get rid of this axis title because we already have this there. We don't need this axis title. So I can go here and just select uh, Y axis, switch off the title, and then we go to X axis and switch off the title. Another thing I can do is instead of having this um, axis title here, I can actually have a uh, data label instead and just switch this X axis off, right? So let me just switch this off, right? So I'm going to switch this X axis off and I'm going to just switch on the data label and I will say inside hand, that's the position, inside end. So since I've done this for this one, I don't need to repeat the steps. So just use the format painter, use this one. And then I can also use the format painter for this one. I think it should work on the tie two as well. Yeah. So it works on the tie two, but I don't need the, uh, I don't need the, uh, yeah, I don't need this one for this one, but I think I need uh, X tie two for this one. So I need Y axis tie two for this one. So let me switch it on. Okay, so I have this and all this one, I can actually reduce the size of this card because the size of this card uh, really does not make sense to me right now. So if I go here and I change this to maybe 12 and um, okay, maybe 12 is too small, maybe 18 and then maybe the category label to like nine. Yeah, so this is making a lot of sense already. And you can see the background kind of tied with it. So I can go to view now and switch off my grid lines so we see how this works. So this is looking interesting. So I can also switch the grid line inside the chart off as well. So let's go to grid lines. So grid lines here and also switch horizontal and vertical grid lines off. Now this makes a lot of interesting sense. We can start adding more interesting things to this, like changing the color of the visual, uh, making the visual look nice. For example, if I want to put a little color to the bars, I can say, okay, don't let us use too much color. I just want the black color, All right? So just by selecting black here, and I'm going to even do format painter for this since they are the same chart. Uh, I'm going to select black for this one. And this one too, I'm going to select the line color to be uh, black. So the line color to be black as well. 
So the line color to be black, and I want the line to also smooth as well. So maybe I can work on the line a little bit. So I'll go to the uh, to the line to linear. So the linear is kind of okay, but let me make, change it to smooth. So smooth kind of uh, make a lot of sense. So I don't need to uh, probably do a lot of work on this one, right? So let me just even do another category here, and then let's do a little bit of drill down as well. Okay, so. This makes a lot of sense and this is looking nice already, right? So this one as well, I can change the color to black as well. So just go to fill color and change the highest color to black and the lowest colors to something like ash, right? Now my visual is looking interesting compared to what I have before. Compared to what I have before, it's looking very, very interesting. So that's one thing you should have in mind. Stop using a uh, pie chart and use the right visualization. So the tip number six is very straightforward less is brilliant so anything that doesn't make sense in your dashboard get rid of it you should not have visuals with so much uh, uh, things on your dashboard so make sure that less is brilliant but another thing you can do is you can kind of uh, improve this visual by adding comparison so hard comparison to this visual and also had uh, maybe an icon to this one and also had the visualization to, to this one just like the way you have it here and improve on the way you, you, you do your things right so the last but not the least on my eight tips is choose your color palette and choose the right color. What I usually tell people is use the monochromatic uh, color approach, which is basically one color, and you have a shade of that color. So whether the darker shade or the lighter shade. Or use an uh, analogous color, which is kind of the, the, the same similar colors, but it's a bit different and it kind of makes sense. So if you want to use the tradiac approach, I think it's going to be a little bit messy, but just be careful, right? Color is very important. You should not use color in your dashboard when uh, the color doesn't make sense or the color doesn't have a meaning. So let me think, let me know what you think about this visualization tips in the comment section and what you think about this entire video. So thank you so much for watching this video. And you can see that in my last design, I have the black design here, which you can actually uh, do a challenge to create your own. Okay, so this is amazing right so you can actually put it in a blue color and arrange your dashboard to make sense like the way i did or put it in a purple